Hey guys and welcome to the fish room. I'm Rachel O'Leary and it's time for a species spotlight. Today we're in front of a row of my quarantine tanks and we're going to talk about the Vietnamese white cloud or Tanithis micagama. And they are a really nice, easy, durable, vibrant community fish. So let's take a look and I'll tell you more about them. These guys are really, really similar to their cousin, the white cloud mountain minnow, also known as Tanichthys albanubs, though they are known primarily from the Ben Hai River in Vietnam. But like their cousin, I think they're an extremely, extremely underrated fish. They are noticeably smaller than, um, than your typical white cloud mountain minnow, getting only about an inch and a quarter. And I find them to be particularly stunning. They have this wonderful bright blue eye, the red in that anal fin, and as you could see in that guy right there, a beautiful white margin to their dorsal fin. Now you see that most when males display to other males in courtship or as a display of dominance. Also similar to regular white clouds, these guys are egg scatterers and continuous spawners and super easy to breed, which again is a good thing because their habitat is critically threatened. Uh, and it's threatened for a few reasons. One is it's an area that is particularly known for its rice production, so agriculture has an impact on their habitat. And also because it's a quickly growing area that's undergoing rapid urban growth, which is leading to their habitat to being pretty badly destroyed. I mean, the good news is these guys are already being maintained by fish farmers and by hobbyists, but they are certainly one that is well worth giving your attention to. They're generally pretty affordable from three to five dollars a piece, and they do well with just about any community fish. Um, they do come from relatively fast flowing shallow streams, so are an appropriate tank mate in a hill stream setup, but they certainly don't require that and can do well with just average filtration. They'll eat pretty much anything in the wild. They're a micro predator. In the home aquaria, they'll eat flake, frozen, live, dried, it doesn't really matter. If you wanna spawn them, you wanna use either, you wanna use either spawning mops or really dense levels of planting. The fry will hatch after two to three days and go up near the surface, at which point the parents are pretty prone to eating them, at least indoors. So it's a good idea to pull either the parents or the fry at that time. These are an excellent candidate to work with outside. All in all, just a really great, vibrant choice for any level aquarist. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss any of my Tuesday tips or species spotlights. Make sure you stop by my Facebook as well as my website, MsJinx.com, where you can find my upcoming speaking engagements, my current stock list, and information on all things nano. As always, don't forget to let me know below if you have any questions, comments, or suggestions.